horses have this healing energy. Uh, some of my clients, um, they say that just by touching the horse's body brings their heart rate down, brings their blood pressure down. There's just all kinds of calm that they feel just by touching the horse and being near them. If you are fearful, they can smell it. Mm -hmm. If you're happy, they can smell it. Your chemistry changes with all of your emotions. Right. In addition, all of your emotions have a particular level of vibration. These horses sense and feel the vibrations you're putting out. I this is this is such a discovery for me because I feel like I'm wanting to have a better connection with nature. I love mm -hmm. being in nature. I know the benefits of it, mm -hmm. but it's with kind of the earth's atmosphere, mm -hmm. plants, and the beach, and those elements where you know I've experience like a change and it's like that energy exchange you talked about i know that you know it's not a placebo effect with grounding and earthing like there is a real true benefit there and now i'm becoming a believer right yeah. in in this through this coaching uh with the horses program so mm -hmm. tuning in once again welcome to the colors green youtube channel where we focus on all things gardening juicing um, plant-based eating as well as fitness as a key components for living a vibrant healthy and prosperous life and so i'm so happy today to be talking to sonia kalua correct me if i'm no, mispronouncing your name your last name we've been working together and <laughs> i need to get the pronunciation right but she is an executive slash leadership slash life coach yes and we have been working together on her yeah. on her coaching with horses program so i asked her to sit down with me today and just talk to me a little bit about it i want to be able to share it because i talk about all these things like all the components like you know gardening fitness plant-based eating you know juicing as mm -hmm. the key components mm -hmm. but with all those you have to set goals yeah you have to figure out what it is you want to attain and then how you're going to get to that mm -hmm. and so sometimes if you set a goal you might need some help and what you do is you bring in a coach right to help you with that so i thought what a great way to kind of bring those two topics together you're helping me explore mm -hmm. you know some of the goals that i have especially around you know leadership um you know and just leading teams mm -hmm. so i'd love for you to share it, it's fascinating to me and i've already had breakthroughs just in a couple of sessions working with you so i wanted you to talk to me talk to my audience yeah. about kind of what you have going on so just to start out, like what, like talk about your background and how you got into the Coaching with Horses program. Oh, uh, it's a long journey, but um, I, I have a diverse background, just like anybody that's alive <laughs> and works for any length of time. Yeah. Um, I started off, you know, the early part of my career was in marketing and advertising. So okay. I had a whole life there in which I was an entrepreneur, solopreneur, and then and ultimately I had a, a, a small company with about, uh, 20 employees and many contractors and, wow. and I was CEO of that company for about 13 years and then um, I, then I was asked to design um, an internet marketing program for um, Dallas County Community Colleges and Southern Methodist University also used it leveraged it uh, University of North Texas also leveraged part of my program oh, wow. and so I became a visiting scholar for the Dallas Community Colleges for a while and taught that uh, yeah so after having a career in marketing for, for 13 years um, I was a uh, involved in designing an internet, internet marketing program for Dallas County, County Community Colleges. Right. Um, it became part of the statewide welcome, which meant that any community college in the state could use my program. Mm -hmm. So it was available for them. Um, I taught it for a while. I taught for SMU and North Texas, the, the part of that curriculum. And because of that, I caught the attention of Shell Oil Company, who um, contracted me to do some design for them for their corporate universities. Nice. And then um, they liked me a lot, and they hired me full time. And so I was with Shell for a number of years. And then was with Baker Hughes after that, and then now I'm a consultant. And in my consulting life, I've, I'm uh, now a coach. So I've been doing the coaching journey for about three years, mm -hmm. and looking at all the different possibilities because coaching is not a, it, it, it's actually a rather broad industry. Yep. There are all kinds of coaches out there. Um, you know, life coach is pretty common and pretty generic in terms of the term, but even that has its own specificity because each coach has a niche, right? You know, a place that they focus on a particular demographic folks that they, that they focus on. And um, in my space, you know, um, I've done the, tradi the traditional executive leadership coaching. And quite honestly, I feel like anytime I work with someone in that space, I'm actually helping them with life coaching. So it's really life coaching with a particular focus. Yep, for sure. uh, and in this case, um, I'm 
bringing together uh, two loves of mine, which is uh, horses are definitely a part of my life. And um, because I, I, I bought this ranch so that I could have my horses in it. And so now uh, those freeloaders and finally now have a job. <laughs> <laughs> and they are now put to work, and they are healers on this ranch, and so they help. They are healers. They are healers now, that's their job, and they help me uh, help people focus on what their innermost desires and concerns are, because horses themselves are very, very pure beings, mm -hmm. and uh, they're highly emotional, they're highly sensitive, um, and they're a bit telepathic, psychic, if you will. Um, anybody that's been a horse athlete knows that uh, if you want a horse to do a series of jumps, for example, that you, you as the rider will visualize um, what the process of doing the jump is. And you'll see it in your mind, you'll go over the jump with your horse in mind from in saddle, you'll visualize the whole thing, and the horse will also sense it and feel it with you so that they will get it, they'll connect to it, and they will also do the jump as practice. Wow. So it's a, they're very telepathic and very psychic in that way. Um, but also when you work with horses, they can read you 100%. They, they, uh, they totally work with body language. That's how they communicate, mostly. And um, horses are prey animals. Uh, and so because they are prey animals, they're very, very aware. Um, and they're very astute. And they're very deep, deep, soulful animals. The interesting, one interesting thing about them is that um, their hearts are seven times the size of human hearts. Wow. And so we humans have electromagnetic, electromagnetic energy that we exude around our bodies. But imagine someone with seven times the size heart mm. has seven times the expansiveness of electromagnetic energy. So there are a lot of people that, that use horses for healing. There's a whole industry called hippotherapy. There's a type of practice that often is used for people with PTSD, persons with disabilities, etc. cetera. Yeah. That hippotherapy is very helpful because horses have this healing energy. Uh, some of my clients, uh, they say that just by touching the horse's body brings their heart rate down, brings their blood pressure down. There's just all kinds of calm that they feel just by touching the horse and being around them. Now, the, the thing about coaching with horses is that uh, they go straight to your subconsciousness. Mm -hmm. And you cannot hide, you cannot lie to a horse because they just figure it out, right? And um, they're very pure beings. And working with them, they will reflect the energy of the, the client that they're with. Right. Mainly because horses are herd animals and they're trying to suss out, because they're prey, they're trying to suss out, are you a predator? And if you're not, who are you going to be in the herd with us? Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to be in close proximity to us, we're going to figure out, are you going to be a member of the herd? And how do we work with you? And so they're going to suss you out. And when you're a rider, they figure out, first of all, I do not want you on my back. They don't want, <laughs> they don't. Horses don't want you on your back. So we have to build trust with them and leadership with them right. in order to be allowed up on the back and not be thrown off. <laughs> so um, there's a lot that a rider has to learn in, order, in, in horse language in order to successfully work with the dealers. And so same thing goes with horse, coaching with horses. Um, you learn a lot about yourself, you learn a lot about how you interact with people, and you also learn a lot about really what you're hiding from your own self yep. when you work alongside a horse, because the horse will always reflect the energy you're putting out. If you are fearful, they can smell it. Mm -hmm. If you're happy, they can smell it. Your chemistry changes with all of your emotions. Right. In addition, all of your emotions have a particular level of vibration, and horses sense and feel the vibrations you're putting out. So, you know, it's not a mistake that people say, what's the vibe thing, you know, you're putting out there? I, I sense the vibe, or I, I like the vibe around the right. The idea is your negative emotions or darker emotions, like your fear and greed and grief, I mean, uh, those have lower vibrations to them, uh, mavericks wise Whereas, you know, very high emotions like love and peacefulness, joy, joy mm -hmm. they actually have higher mavericks vibrations to them. And horses sense all of this. Yeah. So they know what relationship you have, and they know what two things are. As a matter of fact, horses will remember the last vibration you had when they last saw you. Wow. And when you come into their space again, they'll try to assess out whether you still have that same heart vibration, and they'll treat you accordingly. And so that's why it's always good practice that when you leave a horse, when you're done with a horse session, you know, you do say thank you and goodbye. And you did that. I, I was asking, how do I, how do I say goodbye? How yeah. do I, how do I greet them? Actually, you know, coming in. Yeah. I, I wanted to say you said that you talked about horses being an emotional, you know, emotional beings. Yes. Yes. And I, this is this is such a discovery for me because I feel like I'm wanting to have a better connection with nature. I love mm -hmm. being in nature. I know the benefits of it, mm -hmm. but it's with kind of the Earth's atmosphere, mm -hmm. plants, and the beach, and those elements where you know I've experience like a change and it's like that energy exchange you talked about but the first time i visited you for the session i didn't disclose the fact that you know the day before i had gotten some really bad news mm -hmm. like heartbreaking news like i found out something that just really devastated me and so that was the energy that i'm pretty sure i brought to the session because i was figuring out how to process it you know you just yeah. you, you get hit with something like that and right. you have to figure it out yeah. 
So I don't know what energy I brought to the session, mm -hmm. but I do know that on the ride home mm -hmm. and then the next day, there was relief. Yes. There was relief. So, so I know, I know that, you know, it's not a placebo effect with grounding and earthing, like there is a real true benefit there. And now I'm becoming a believer, right? Yeah. In, in this, through this coaching uh, with the horses program. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to, so I wanted to add that. And then I, and as a segue to say like, okay, so who is this program for? Who, who could come to, you know, seek out coaching with horses with, with you or with any coach? Like who is the program for? Well, every coach has their own niche, basically. But coaching with horses is for anybody. Anybody that has uh, is willing to do the work to go to dig deep um, and figure out what what they want to accomplish, either goals in life or if they're stuck somewhere. I I tend to uh, work really well with people who are in transition, mm -hmm. and they, they may not be aware of self limiting beliefs that hold them back. And coaching with horses is really good at addressing that okay. or helping uncover some things that they may not have thought of. So the horses go help go immediately to the subconscious. They go very deep very quickly. Wow. And, um, but I mean, coaching overall uh, is generally the difference between coaching and therapy, for example. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. is, is that with therapy, you tend to go look back to find cause and, and see if you can remedy the cause or, or see if there's something you can do to treat this, the pain from that cause. Mm -hmm. Whereas coaching is we start with what is right now and we work forward. We might be dealing with a similar issue, but we look at what can we do now? This is what it is. What can we do? How do we move forward? How do we make a plan? Um, and so it's very, very much. Forward focus. Forward okay. I mean, there are ways to work with it with hypnotherapy, for example. You might have an issue, let's say there are some people that may go to a therapist to deal with weight issues. You can also go to coaching to deal with weight issues. The difference is uh, you work to identify what are these self-limiting beliefs, um, you know, what is my internal dialogue, which is, which is important for both therapy and coaching. What is the internal dialogue? What are, what's the conversation that I have with myself inside? What, what do I say to me where, you know, that no one else hears, right? Right. And so, um, coaching with horses, we'll dig into that pretty quickly. You experienced that just today, session number two. You know? <laughs> yes. And so, um, working once you understand what that inner dialogue is, whatever those hangups are, um, you can you can push past almost anything, really. Um, if there's a deep uh, a wound or an issue or or fears, uh, sometimes hypnotherapy you can you can really retrain the mind mm -hmm. to push past it very quickly once you identify what the triggers are. Sometimes it takes a while to find what the triggers are, but once you get to know them, hypnotherapy hypnotherapy can push you through. And we can coach you beyond that, right? Coach you into a new way of working with something. Um, so coaching is, is complementary to mm -hmm. therapy, although I'm not the therapist. Um, I can work alongside one, but okay. I'm always going to have the training focus. Forward thinking. I'm yeah. always going to be helping people look at what is the new goal, what is the next step that you're going to take. Gotcha. Sometimes people don't know what their next step is. And so that's why I do work well with people who are in transition saying, okay, I just got laid off, I don't know what I'm going to do now. Mm -hmm. And something tells me I don't want the same old job, but I don't know what I do want to have. Right. So people will come to me with that and we'll work at that stage. Um, if they start off with coaching with horses, um, what they'll find is that they'll they'll try, pretty quickly try to get to where, what is inside their heart, what is it that they really want to say from within their body. So they'll listen. You know, they get a body awareness. They they start listening to that their own self, their own body. So mm. it's, there's a body intelligence that they establish. And then once you understand that, you realize if you live from your heart and work forward with your heart, you can very quickly move towards goals. Um, sometimes people feel the need to push because it's where they think they should go versus where they really, really want to go. go. Wow. And you have a lot more success when you when you really are working from the heart level versus where all the shoulds and shouldn'ts, because the shoulds and shouldn'ts are actually part of that negative self-speak mm. instead of really what the heart wants to say. And you can help the heart even more easily with coaching. Does that make sense? It does. It does. I'm just thinking about like how, you know, we're set out with these career-wise, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, my, my journey and what I talk about is like health and wellness, but I think it's interconnected and it overlaps with what you do in your professional Life. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes people have misconceptions about like needing to keep all of that separate and here's my persona here and here's my persona there. And I'm thinking, you know, people may not know that coaching with horses is something that they can do mm -hmm. to help them in their professions. Oh, absolutely. So, so as you were saying that, I'm thinking, yeah, this is really for, for any and everybody who wants to tap into really what that heart knowledge might be mm -hmm. that they don't have. Yeah. So what, so now I'm curious, like, what are the big misconceptions? Like what, what do you find yourself having to like redirect people and bring them back around to understanding like what this program is about? Well, I mean, there are some people that say, well, I, I've never ridden a horse, so I really don't want to, you know, that would scare me. Right? Well, first of all, you're never going to ride a horse, coaching with horses, it's not what we do. It's not about riding horses. It's not about riding horses. It's about <laughs> sitting alongside an animal that's going to reflect your emotional state, that's going to reflect your true self, that's mm -hmm. going to reflect um, really who you are subconsciously and, and will tell you what you're putting out because they will reflect it. Okay. They will show you. They will, through their own behavior, they're going to respond to the energy you're putting out. And that's relevant 
to any kind of situation, whether it's a leadership situation, whether it's a relationship situation, it doesn't matter. Um, and so we, to be honest, anytime I've coached anybody in an executive coach situation or in a, in a leadership environment, group coaching, it all boils down to life coaching. It really turns out to be life coaching because it's very difficult to separate the two, you know, your, your work life from your personal life. You're not two different people. We, we are life. one person. You're one person and you just happen to be doing different things, but your coping mechanisms are the same throughout, right? How you're going to cope with, with challenges in a relationship is pretty much going to look very similar in your, in your relationship at work you yep. know, and stuff like that. So it, it's at the heart of it is, if you think of like animal theory would say, no matter what they do, you could teach them different things to do, but they're still going to be the same animal. So yep. your connections to them is going to be the same throughout. And so your connections to people at the very heart of it is the same throughout. And what's common in all of it? You. You're the baseline. Mm. And so if you get to know, understand you as the baseline and what, what you're really underneath, what your beliefs are, whether good or bad, whether it's an authentic you or a false statement you, mm. you know, some of the self-limiting beliefs kind of thing. Right. If you can underlie those and pull those out and bring the light to them, then you can say, okay, this is how it plays out in whatever facet of my life. Mm. And so horses help you to, um, oh, oh, let's give them an example. Um, when you're working with a horse, and sometimes you're looking at the behavior, and I'll ask you, what do you think you're doing? And you, and you make a statement, and I go, is that really what you think you're doing, or are you making a projection? Right. And, um, which that, typically happens. Which happens, because yeah. often we make assumptions about people. We make yeah. assumptions that, that somebody's doing something because that's what I would do, mm. or that's what my son would do, or my daughter, or my wife, or my husband, or whatever. Sure. And, and in reality, it's like, well, with a horse, they just are. <laughs> and it's a high probability that you are not speaking their language and you're speaking your language about them. Mm. And actually they may function and think and behave in a whole totally different way. You cannot make assumptions about people, so what's the way to do it? Communicate. Communicate. There is such a lesson in this. I mean, it's huge for me. It's like it's, a, it's just like, okay, I need to zero in on this and just keep going deeper. But wait, so we were talking about, you were talking about riders and racing and the jockeys and oh, kind of yeah. the history of some of that. Yeah. This was a very like gen gentle, respectful, process mm -hmm. from the horse's point of view in my mind mm -hmm. um do the horses know that they're helping people oh yeah yes they do Th there's a there's a, a journey that they go through i mean like for the first couple of times that they were working with people they're like who are these people <laughs> i can't i can't you, you know like, what am hey. i what am i doing here why are they standing in my head and, you know so yeah, I mean at first, but now they get they they get that there's something happening because they sense the energy. Mm -hmm. They sense there's an energy to these people that there's a bit of discovery. They get that. They sense it. They know what that looks like. They know what that feels like. Yeah. They're always very observant, and they always have an eyeball on me because I'm their constant. Right? I'm the human they know consistently. You would have a very different experience if I was not in the pedigree. Oh, I wouldn't be in the <laughs> in the round pin without you. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's a very different experience. So since they trust me, uh, they do wonder why you're there. And if you're, if they notice that I'm talking to you, and they check, they check my energy out the whole time we're together. Mm -hmm. and so if I'm grounded and I'm very clear in my energy and my intention with you and with them, they trust me, and then I'll trust you. Um, but you know, in the case of what you saw Indy do today, she was working on trusting you just as much as you're working on trusting her. Right. But she has an agenda all the time because horses eat all the time. <laughs> she was looking for the hay. <laughs> she was looking for hay. She was looking for treats in your pocket. She was. <laughs> Trying to get your attention by biting your toes, and you know, but she's she's very food driven. But so many horses, most horses are. Yeah, but even in that, I was kind of picking up on cues and like learning things that about myself, yeah, like and right. how I might be showing up to environments. Yes, you know, with people, with mm -hmm. teams, you know, just yeah. just making me really, you know, think and reflect about that. So, like for example, I have a question for you. We didn't talk about. Okay. Um, you had said that Indy, you didn't feel intimidated by her, so you had a different behavior with her than you would have had a trio mm -hmm. that you would have been intimidated by. And so choosing to work with her versus choosing to work with him would look very different. And I agree, they would have. Mm. So why do you think you chose to work with someone that wasn't intimidating versus someone that could challenge you in a very different way? You know, and it's, the, it's, that, it's those perspectives. And it makes me think, have to stop and think like, okay, what is the reason I went in that direction? Mm -hmm. um, something happened in the first session where... Um, I was work I was doing the body scan and kind of had the focus on trio first mm -hmm. and you you know you show you told me what my reaction was mm -hmm. and then you gave me the feedback in the debrief on what my reaction was the same thing with um, with Indy mm -hmm. and so I wasn't expecting that and it was kind of like I was maybe had a frown or was like had a weird like facial expression and my body language changed so I chose to work with Indy so I could further uncover that. Mm -hmm. Like I want to understand like what was the response that I had. Um, mm -hmm. 
And then I guess on the surface, it's like, I always go for the underdog. <laughs> it's like, you know what? I want, you know, I, I, I want to see everybody win. Um, no, I'm not intimidated by, by envy, but I want to see what I can learn and the, the relationship like that we could potentially develop together. I mean, that's what I think on the surface, but right. we'll, we'll find out because we're going to keep working on uncovering what it is. Right. Yeah. The, I mean, it's a fascinating journey. I mean, you can choose anybody that wants to approach it in this way, you can choose to continue working with the horses because you will continue to uncover things every time you come. Mm -hmm. I mean, stuff will pop up that will make you think, how, what is the metaphor here? Right. Well, horses themselves are not just a metaphor. They're a great metaphor, but not just that. They themselves are also very live, in the moment, response, right now beings. Yeah. So it's a, they're a very good indicator of um, you in the moment. And you may not be aware all the time of how you come across or what you put out. And you may not be aware of what your own triggers are and what those look like and the ones right. you're fired off, but suddenly the horse reacts differently and you realize, what did I just do? Like like earlier today when you were just intending to follow Indy around and suddenly she leapt up and started running. <laughs> and you didn't realize you actually did that to her. Uh, okay. Remember that? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, didn't realize. realize. I didn't know what happened. I didn't you know. didn't know what happened. She suddenly just ran away from you. And what, what she had actually done was, in horse language, she did exactly what she needed to do to tell a horse, I'm in control and I want you to move. Because in horse language, when they're trying to suss each other out, who's going to be the dominant, the first horse to make the other move their feet is the horse in control. And often that's what happens in leadership too. The first person to make the other person flinch or the other person to take action, that's the person that has the hierarchy. And so, I mean, it happens in human relationships, business relationships, and in this case, it happens in horse-human relationships. Whoever makes the other move their feet first is the one that has the power. Mm -hmm. And you inadvertently did that. In a magical way, and you didn't know that you were just stepping in the right spot for her visual, you know, field. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that your head was down, pointed towards her back feet, just like a horse would do. Right. And you were stepping behind her, trying to follow her pace, and that made her go, "Oh crap, I gotta move." And so she <laughs> she just shot off and moved. She did the right thing. Hey, she, go? she did the right thing to make a horse move, and the, and so the horse responded without you even knowing what you were doing. But right. but that. Is a, a good question for you is how often do you do that to people in the leadership position, mm -hmm. right? That you inadvertently just by be, your presence, something that you say mm -hmm. makes somebody fearful or makes them move or makes them hopeful. I mean, it's, it talks about the value of the power of your leadership role, yeah. right? Um, and why it's important that you're always being watched by your subordinates. You're always, they're always looking at you. They're always watching you to see, well, that's my leader. I'm going to take their cues. Take their cues, right. And so what cues are you putting out? And you didn't even know what cues you were putting out. Not, not then, but now I know. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's, that's, that's why I do these things. That's why mm -hmm. I'm on this journey. Like that's because I am a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. And you, we were talking about it. Like I've learned over time, like I don't expect myself to show up day one perfect. Oh, sure. But it's being put in these situations to be able to learn. Like, okay, now I can take that cue and realize. Like and there were a couple of other things that I did. Like now I need to take that into whatever the next session is. But it starts with awareness, mm -hmm. and even even with the health and wellness bit, like that piece with with diet, and it's like what happened with me going down that plant based eating journey. It mm -hmm. started with awareness, just awareness of that I didn't I wasn't feeling as good as my body was designed to feel, mm -hmm. and so it works for me now. And if it, it, and and I've gone through that learning journey, and I keep trying things, and you know, willing to test out the unknown. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's 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 what this that's the meaning that I'm getting from from this like particular session as well. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's I'm here for it. <laughs> so okay, the, the the other question that I wanted to ask you around the you know coaching coaching with horses. Have you taken anybody through like where you have a success story that sticks out? where a person was able to, maybe in your program or other programs, you know, through the mm -hmm. cohort that you're going through, like what's some of the success stories that stick out to you? Um, I have coached people for a, a wide variety of reasons, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but like I said, there's, a, there's, I tend to help people who are in transition. And so one, one particular uh, story is I, I coached a client for about six months and she had just, she was going through transition. She wasn't clear what was going to happen to her role. She was highly suspicious she was going to get laid off and she wanted to get in front of it. She wanted to say, what are my options? How should I be looking at this? My chain, the, my company is, is doing a reorg and doing a restructuring. I just feel that there's going to be layoffs. What should my strategy be? Yeah. And uh, we talked through what her potential options could be. And I said, but are there, you know, like what happens in a lot of corporations, they give you an opportunity to uh, post for other roles. Because when you, when you, you don't know if your role is going to go away or maybe you're told, uh, you guys are gonna, you guys are not going to be great fit, so 
your team's probably going to get dissipated so you have a chance to you can do 50-50 and try to stay in role or you can go ahead and post for a new role and if you get a new role then you're good you're not in your at all mm -hmm. and so that was the path she decided to take she didn't want to risk sticking it by her guns and find out later you know a couple months down the road that she's got a job so she decided that she was going to move to something else and and we just had to talk through that i mean that alone was something that helped her move forward and get out of her stuck place and okay. then she had to look at what am i going to interview for so we talked about all the different roles that seemed of interest to her and then we said which ones are going to give you the greatest growth which ones do you feel uh, would, would serve you later on down the line in your career and she made a choice in that space mm -hmm. and, and uh, I had advised her to talk to a number of people, especially the hiring managers, if she could, to say, tell me more about this. I need to understand what you're looking for. Um, uh, I talked to her own boss to say, would you be okay to sponsor me or, or champion me or recommend a mentor to me in this space? And she found a mentor, which was something she'd never done before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, advising her in that space, um, she was able to land a role with nice. the help of her champion. And um, then I continued to coach her for a few months while she got her feet wet and under her. And then um, we had only agreed on a six month contract and we said, well, at the end of it, I said, do you feel complete? She goes, well, I got where I wanted to go. You know, <laughs> Success! So, yeah, so, that was it. so coaching doesn't always have to be endless, endless, endless. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. It's not like therapy where you can be in therapy for you know, forever or whatever. Right. But coaching can be as brief as three months, six months, a year or longer. It just depends on what you want out of coaching. Right, what you want to accomplish with it, right? And and uh, so I I offer traditional coaching, which is you know we can meet face to face or we can meet virtually. I do tons of calls on Zoom. Um, I'm, I'm I'm now working on building a, a group coaching situation where we'll have we'll meet you know once a month and oh, we'll yes. go through that. Yeah. So um you know there's different ways to look at coaching, um and and uh, like I like I said I have these two niches you know one is a uh, young women eighteen to twenty four because this is a group that um, I feel uh, based on what I'm hearing, I've talked to a bunch of others, um, of, of young women in this age group, what 60% uh, of young women in this age group um, are either being diagnosed with anxiety or have reported anxiety just going through these years. Yep. And a lot of it has to do with trying to get through school or yeah. survive or become a young adult. In the um, age of social in media. In the age of social media. I mean, there are things that facing young women today that we didn't have when I was. I'm so thankful. You know, I, when I was going to university, I went to a party school, and so I was just like, I'm away from home, yay! You know, so I mean, I just had a good time, but young women don't have that same sense of safety. They don't have the same sense of psychological safety today right. that they used to have. I mean, you have school shootings. Um, there's sexual abuse. Young women are still afraid to report sexual abuse because society in general tends not to believe the abuse. Yeah, it's madness. You know? And so, I mean, statistics are still out there. Three out of four women have, have been a victim of abuse of some capacity. I mean, that's insane. And so young women are in that space and they, they are not, they don't, generally don't have the coping skills. How can you be prepared for a school shooting? I mean, psychologically, it's very difficult. Prepare for that. And, and then on top of that, we have a very uh, uh, high uh, success driven culture. I mean, high achievement seems to be a new standard for a lot of young women going to university. And so for that reason, and that, much less adulting skills, I mean, those are. <laughs> nebulous kinds of statements, but still there's something there that says there's a sense of responsibility. I think I should have my book together. Right. Like, don't take for granted learning how to balance a checkbook. Balance a checkbook. Like, like things like that. Or pay your bills or, you know, just planning, meal planning, I mean, uh, you know, car repairs, I mean, things like that. Just stuff that today were, you know, at my age are quite practical. Back then, I didn't know either. Mm -hmm. And so there are, there are lots of um, young women and families uh, that they don't necessarily feel uh, they have an adult in their lives that they can, they, they can feel they can discuss confidentially with and their parents still have faith in whoever that person is <laughs> know, so that's, hard. that's why being having a coach a professional coach is often a good idea to hire someone that you know is going to keep it confidential because it's in our contract mm. um, but also you know we're going to always have our clients best interest in mind we're always going to help them look forward to the future work on a plan help help them develop themselves help them grow what is the best outcome that you want for yourself and we will set a plan with you to get there that's what that's the best use of a coach for anybody, but especially for young women in this age group. So I, I have that as a as a niche as much as I have a niche for um, mature women that are looking for um, uh, finding their equilibrium, mm -hmm. finding a better balance in life. And, and I'm not saying work life balance because actually I don't think that exists. I've been hearing that like that's like that that term that is not it's it's there, accurate. It's not accurate. Yeah. yeah. The idea is what work life balance would be is can you establish an equilibrium? with yourself and the things that you, between what you have as responsibilities and things that you just want to do mm -hmm. to enjoy life. So to have, to make sure that you are taking care of yourself first and foremost. And even if the amount of time isn't as much as you spend on these things that you 
have to do, like work. Or yeah, but you still, you still get to. You still get to have quality time invested in yourself. Yeah. And whether if it's just coaching for an hour or if it's working out for an hour or whatever it is, those things that you set aside for yourself that you, you have to do them so that you maintain sanity and groundedness mm -hmm. so that you can do all these other things. So important. Because without it, you know, without your mental health, without your physical health, you have nothing. You can't do all this other stuff. Everything else becomes yeah, non-existent. Non-existent. So yeah. I am a holistic wellness coach, and for and my niche is for mature women who, who you know, might have a weight challenge or or uh, need to look at a, a different way of doing nutrition or want to find a way to balance uh, nutrition and fitness and work life. You know, those kinds of things. There's a way to find your equilibrium there, and those are the women that I want to help. Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, I have really loved working with you. Good. I'm learning yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm learning so much. And so I wanted to share and spread the word about that. Mm -hmm. Is Am I okay to leave your website or your any social media handles or just email maybe <laughs> to contact you oh, about contact me. Yeah, the Coaching I mean, with Horses program or any of the others? Because you're talking about you know fitness and nutrition. I'm like, do I need to sign up for that too? Yeah, we should probably talk about those possibilities <laughs> so, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can just send me an email. Which is okay. which is Sonia at Kaloida.com. Okay. S O N Y A at Kaloida.com. That's C A L O O Y dot com. com. Okay, I'll I'll be sure to put that in the description and make it yeah. easier for people just yeah. to click on it, send you an email, get in touch. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing so much. And I look forward to like continuing on this journey, I right? Me too, yeah. Figure out why I chose to work with Indy. That's a, that's the next episode. <laughs> Indy is is a sweet little horse who is I call her a Houdini horse because she figures out how to escape her stall in unique and <laughs> in interesting ways. But she's a sweet and she likes to nibble on your feet. She does like to nibble on your feet. Yes. <laughs> well, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in and sticking with us. If you found this um, episode interesting and informative, please be sure to not only like and subscribe but also share it uh, with anyone you know who also might be interested. Until next time.